Schon, ich sehe hier. Ja, thank you. Uh, thank you for having us here in Sweden. Uh, as you said, we were uh, invited uh, five years back, working on a different uh, studio then. Uh, For some reasons we didn't make it so but now we have the chance to redo that um atelier Ö is our new name uh it's me and matt the tall guy oh it doesn't seem to be that tall there but uh the tall guy next to me um uh, we are um, friends from 15 years back we studied together and then started to work together in um on gotland And this is our studio. It's an old painter's uh, atelier uh, studio, and we took it over uh, four years ago. Uh, it's a lovely place um, where it's just filled with joy, and we we kind of try to work as um, architect with a lot of joy and fun in everything we do. It's kind of the most important thing. Of obvious being serious, but also add a lot of unexpected and fun stuff. Uh, we have um, mainly private clients doing villas, summer houses, and additions to houses. So uh, that being said, it's kind of what I'm going to show today. Um, but uh, I think uh, it's nice to, to know where we are at. Uh, this is uh, half of Sweden, uh, Gotland being this island. So it's the biggest island in the Baltics. Um, This is where we work. Uh, we we live in Visby, which is the only town on Gotland. Uh, it's uh, the the whole island has a population of around 60,000 people. Uh, so it's quite big island, quite less people than so it's not that dense. Uh, it's a historic place. Uh, so I'll give you some background to where we are. At. Um, This is a some somewhat 500 year old uh, drawing or map of Visby, which is a World Heritage Site. Uh, we have a really uh, a lot of old houses and a medieval wall surrounding the city. Uh, it's been a place for commerce, uh, uh, wars, um, all the trade that took place in the Baltics happens uh, with or without Gotland's. Uh, mm -hmm. Swedish, it was Swedish, it was Danish, it was Russians, uh, Germans. Uh, there were thousands of uh, buildings, uh, mon many of them been destroyed. Uh, just of lack of uh, money, I guess. Uh, there is a lot of ruins in our town. This is 200-year-old paintings of these people. Uh, this is being one of the most famous drawings of Gotland. Uh, it's being the Danish people uh, coming. Uh, King Valdemar, I'm looking at you now. <laughs> uh, taking all the treasures, uh, seizing the town uh, six, uh, 700 years ago. Um, um, but it's been a place, uh, been invaded a lot of times. Uh, this is a quite recent picture. This is the tourist invasion. <laughs> uh, um, but um, Yeah, there is a lot of tourists. It's about a million tourists coming each year, uh, mostly during a few weeks in the summer. Um, that being said, it's a, it's a medieval town. So this is just one of many legs that the town or the island <clears throat> sells upon. But it looks like it's, uh, the rest of the year is uh, it's not that crowded. It's just a really beautiful place. And um, it's... Uh, Yeah, you have a thousand-year-old library of materials and inspirations and uh, yeah, building uh, styles that you can take part of. This is also what Gotland is today. Uh, I just wanted to show you that it's not just medieval and warriors and stuff like that. It's actually all the pictures are from, <clears throat> from Gotland. Uh, this is how they uh, sell Gotland towards the mainland of Sweden, but also the rest of the world. So it's actually a, quite a uh summary place uh but just leave that out now because now i'm going to show you more of what we see uh working in our local context in this be me and my colleagues this is just random snapshots from my uh phone um being in this uh details materials you can find a lot of interesting stuff uh if you just stand still for a while and look at detailing 
uh, there is not just all beautiful houses, it's also weird houses and structures that could be really inspiring. Um, just walking out the door. Um, there is a lot of secret gardens in this medieval town that we also find really interesting and um, inspirational. Uh, and just outside, you can find in interesting architecture as well. But this uh, uh, car or bike shed is actually quite nice. Uh, the materials, as I said, uh, these paved stone streets and uh, private roads in in the town or in in the in the um, in the courtyards is super nice and um, also weird windows that you can find. Uh, this is me and Mats uh, having lunch in the streets. So our neighbor is a free three hundred year old building uh, covered with tar, which is kind of the classic way of building uh, wood architecture in Sweden, uh, historical ways. Um, there are some modern houses as well allowed to be built the last 50 years. Uh, the, the left one is um, it's a quite new house. It's only 50 year old. Um, it's a nice uh, palette of uh, materials and structures. So this is some pictures, me walking around, touching and uh, feeling some houses, but getting some inspiration for new plaster we use on and houses so these two are an example where we're trying to to work um, with the builder together with uh, old craftsmen to find uh, in the old ones to get inspire inspiration for the new ones um, and as you said in the beginning uh, we have a legacy from uh, our uh, previous uh, office Hjälsö Arkitekter uh, which uh, we, me and Mats and a few more colleagues were working for many years. Uh, probably uh, if you Google it, it's just bunkers uh, uh, or at least a lot of bunkers. Um, we did a few of them uh, on a peninsula called Bungenes uh, up on northern part of the Gotland. But it's a lot of beautiful houses we did up there together. And like the final before we... Uh, stop working together. We were invited by Grafton to do the Biennale, and um, we sent cutouts from the bunkers as fundaments for us showing some models and drawings from the project of Bunginas. Um, so that was uh, challenging to get these blocks down there, but we managed and also get them home again. Um, Okay, back to normal time. Uh, I, I'm going to show you some houses later on, but now it's a few um, design process um, where we uh, we always try to um, find, as I said, some playfulness in our work, but also we can't really do too much theory. We love just create and, and do stuff. Uh, this is uh, when we try to find a new logo for our uh, studio. Uh, we were first in contact with a, uh, a professional uh, designer and we didn't like the proposal. So it ended up being us just doing it over over lunch, just creating the, the yellow one was the first one we did. The, the blue one was the new one. Uh, but it's, it's the symbol of the circle, uh, symbol of something unexpected sometimes in the quite strict house. Uh, we try to find the... Um, the symbols and the, the shapes that we really uh, find playful uh, in that way is to still be serious, but we need to have that. Uh, we call it a tweak in the eye, like a smile in it. Um, uh, and it comes uh, in many uh, different houses and forms. This is a sauna. Uh, this is an older house we did uh, where you have that arc still being just for the single purpose of being beautiful. Uh, dining table and a door. <clears throat> uh, and a few small projects in the project, so to speak. Um, we do a lot of hands-on work, sketches together with the builders, but also just showing them uh, like quick ideas and they actually being built in just a few days it's kind of how some of the 
smaller stuff happens. It's not that matter of thinking, it's just doing. So the left pictures, uh, this one is from the street of Visby. This being some kind of alteration to it, and it was built just a week later on the house that we did. So it's just uh, communicating really rapid, but also doing it uh, like in this case with um, with sketches instead of uh, proper drawings. Uh, it's uh, normally the drawings is super good, of course, but sketches is really good to have to talk to clients, but also to the builders on site, um, like the one actually holding the hammer or the saw. Uh, to make them understand what we're actually aiming for. Uh, so the, this is just a sketch we did together, uh, me and Mats, to to show the builders how we wanted the shower to be, and the, and this is the result, and it's kind of what we expected. So it's nice to have it. It's the same with this uh, uh, light source, um, outdoor-powered one. So we... Um, kind of just did a super quick sketch and told and we built it together with the electrical guy just to, to get the quartz together and just put, place it there. This being um, a handles to a door, it took a little bit more time, but just to show that we're trying to be involved in every, every aspect of the design phase. Uh, um, it's uh, done in massive copper and uh, fur, uh, even if it's just the, this part and um, the little knob here, but it's uh, two doors for a project that needed something else than the standard solution. <laughs> um, yeah, and looking uh, through the pictures of the phone, all of a sudden I realized we do a lot of pillars all the time, uh, and they also come in pairs uh, a lot of the time. So I, this is just photos of pillars that we've done the last two years. Uh, just interesting how to see that. Um, this is a way of uh, shaping the aesthetics for us, talking about pillars, but also how to, to try to control how to, to manufacturing even this um, fundamental stuff here is uh, made out of, yeah, uh, galvanized uh, massive steel that we sent. I mean, we just make it so complicated sometimes, but it's just uh, a nice way to do it. Also this kitchen uh, work top, ended up getting two pillars it's just uh for the share fun of it i guess um this being the same as we saw before but it's weathered for a year uh and the, this blue one and this is a small uh task that we were given to a house they wanted a new fireplace and we looked at Erskine's. uh as an inspirational source to the left and we're starting to do some sketches and uh we um, alteration a little bit and of course try to find a pattern uh, for it. Uh, it's, it was already functioning. So it was just the aesthetics to add something else to the room. Uh, and this is the final result. Uh, so it's just that we quite uh, rapidly did some sketches and tried to uh, put it together. Uh, we kind of working in the method of sometimes we make mistake and then we try to do it again and not do a mistake but like not overthinking it too much just doing it um and some water gutter uh detailing uh inspirational of course uh <clears throat> came come in many shapes and forms uh but we also try to work with us uh, as an aesthetic uh, form and give it um, something else to the house, not just being a gutter. Um, make a lot of drawings and ideas for it, but this is the result from one house. Uh, this is, the left one is from our context in Visby. Uh, I guess uh, the cars and the bicycle uh, hit that one too many times, so they actually recessed it into the wall, uh, kind of narrow streets. And that was an inspiration for us to another house where we recessed our uh, rainwater gutter into the facade. So we just walk out in there, even if this is a quite bad reference, it's actually inspiring as well. So uh, it comes in many shapes and forms. Uh, this is a idea we had for a smaller house where 
um, we didn't really know what was lacking for the house, but we knew that we wanted to add something, uh, but uh, just uh, just for fun. And um, so the left one is uh, obviously a photo collage, and the right one is a photo of it being uh, being ready. Uh, this is me really happy going to the car painters workshop, getting it. Uh, um, and we place it on the wall and it resembles a little bit of our logo. So maybe this is what we ended up doing. I don't know. Uh, a last example uh, is the, um, we had a project where we wanted to do a mega terrazzo floor, talk to the, to the builder uh, and uh, he said he wouldn't do it. And we talked to another builder, he wouldn't do it. So we decided to do it ourselves uh of course we talked to the client and said that we can't really give any guarantees that it will work probably it work maybe it might not i don't know uh so we're starting to work uh together <clears throat> on site uh smashing a lot of uh, marble and stone that we wanted to add to the floor and then we called our local uh concrete guy uh and then we put on our fisherman trunkers and then we started to place this as a puzzle and um, it doesn't look that much uh, being this and then we grinded it of course and this the left one being the sketch that we sent to the client the right one being when it's just complete this is the result uh it turned out to be really nice i think it was uh less problematic than we thought uh but it was a bit of a gamble to do it we haven't done it before we just yeah, let's do it. Um, and the last uh, thing, uh, this is a random picture from 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 the internet. Uh, we talked about the problem of concrete <clears throat> yesterday a little bit. Um, this being maybe too dry or maybe not uh, the vibration in the concrete in the form in cost in situ wasn't that good, but we can find the beauty in that as well. So we took that as the inspiration and <clears throat> trying to find a plaster for the house that uh, would resemble it of this and this being the result. So, so the beauty in the, in the, in the, in, in wrong, as I wrote <laughs> before, is kind of motivating. Uh, okay. So this is three projects um, that I'm going to show. Uh, we call it the uh, triptych or triptych. I think it's an English word as well. Uh, this is a triptych. Uh, it's an artwork consisting of three sections or parts and makes a whole. Um, uh, this is, has nothing to do with our project. This is bacon versus bacon. So, uh, but um, this is our triptych, which is three houses which resembling quite a lot with each other, but also not. Um, it's three different clients uh three different budgets uh uh different programs uh it's the same um, time it's on gotland all three of them um so there is a resemblance but it is also not so and it's not just three houses it's actually 12 houses for, because every time we make like a summer house or a new villa it's getting too complicated so we add a few more buildings to get a whole uh, we'll start with the project we named the Villa Butter, but it's actually Butter in Swedish, so it doesn't have anything to do with butter, as you. Uh, but let's leave that. <clears throat> this is uh, the site where we came to. Uh, it's like a Gotlandic uh, jungle, uh, sort of. Um, Ives that just climbs the trunks of uh, pine trees and uh, other greens. It's was a super super beautiful uh, dense place with this uh, really dramatic cliff and then you have the view of the ocean as always we try to find what to keep uh, in all our context <laughs> we don't want a clean slate so it's really nice that you can find some kind of ruins or a house to or something else to to cling on to this being some kind of weird stone formation must be a hundred years old uh and this being an old wall. And also we found some foundations in the ground. So we decided to keep them and try to build a house around those, uh, that form, that little form formation that we made a little 
shelf, so to speak. You can place two sun deck chairs there and you can have a beautiful afternoon tea or whatever. Uh, this being the, does it show? Yeah, kind of. Uh, this is the cliff, so it's kind of uh, really dramatic. Uh, this being the, the site, there is a better picture coming. Uh, yeah, we built the house half of the time under a tent because the weather on Gotham could be quite windy and snowy during winter time. Uh, and this is to control uh, both the building time, the cost, but also to be able to work in a more controlled environment. Uh, it's good, uh, but it's expensive. Um, this is the tent from outside. A lot of drawings. I don't know why I showed that. Um, um, yeah, this is one of the import most important drawings. I think you can make a hundred. This one will be one of top three or at least. This is the landscape planning drawing. We have them for all of our projects. It's to control the the in between um the space in between but also all the i mean a house can't just be a house uh, thrown out on a piece of land you need to control the environment around it uh here you can also see that this is the main house but you also have the garage and then we have a guest house and then we have a shed over here and then we have a fifth house up here so it's actually a lot of houses in one project um this being the house done it's uh it's a villa. Uh, they use it from time to time. Uh, the client lives in Stockholm. So it's a summer house, you can say. Um, this is another drawing that we find really intriguing in, in just this project, since we have a cost in situ uh, ceiling. So you just have one chance to, to get all the installations and everything right into the project. Uh, we had two because it was too, too much information into it. So we couldn't really fit it in one. This being the kitchen, uh, you could also see this storm uh, stone formation we kept from earlier pictures down here. So it's actually kind of coming into to the room. Uh, this being uh, another challenge we had. Uh, the the houses uh, for basic materials is uh, copper, oak, concrete, and local limestone. Uh, this is the same, but during nighttime. Uh, the client wanted the, the same um, level on the floor outside and inside. And um, being in Sweden, it rains and snows quite a lot during winter. So we need to control the, the water uh, somehow. So we, together with the builder, we found a solution where we could hide it, like treating it like a normal house foundation and this, then just make like a shelf in stainless steel and then cover that with stone so you could actually take off some of these stones and uh, empty the gutter for the water but also not for uh, there's a lot of technical aspects uh let's just uh, not go too deep in that one um this is some pictures from from the house this being the garage i said actually a technical space underneath so the that core uh part of the house uh is a uh, it's a staircase down to the basement. Um, this being the kitchen again from the other side. Um, we did some extra uh, corner pieces. This being one up here. Uh, it's actually just to, because we, we felt it was lacking something. So we did some kind of stainless steel pillar with this oak thing going on uh mostly for fun uh this thing from the outside uh, uh ceiling uh, skylight the pool and the jungle still kept so we tried to keep the, the greens as close to the building that we could without uh, destroying it and we added a fifth building, as I said, this this came a little bit later in the process. They wanted a sauna. Uh, we were starting to think that we wanted something more playful. So we did did this house, uh, but um, it's a different photographer. So it feels kind of different, but it also is. 
Uh, yeah, and it was published. Uh, this is more of an honest picture of this house uh, taken last autumn. Okay, so the second project uh, in this triptych is uh, Bunker 319. It's placed on Bunganas. Uh, this being the bunker from from the from the road, you can see it in the area. It sits up on the hill. Site analysis uh, and um, this being the same kind of uh, shape of the landscape as we had in in the previous house, uh, not that dramatic, but still sits quite a lot higher than the rest of the surrounding. Uh, this being the bunker, and we're placing the house, sort of speaking, to the the ground. It actually sits quite heavy in the ground. Um, you can see here the cutoff is. Um, sits quite heavy in the ground. We had to take a lot of gravel off the, the place. Um, that's also because of the zoning plan, not allowing the house to be too high. Uh, this is uh, drone footage of the house. Uh, we used the gravel from the ground and surrounding ground on the roof to, to make it more of a part of the house. Um, of the of the of the site, you can see the bunker up here in, in the left corner. This being uh, the the landscape planning drawing, as I talked about before, and this being the drone footage. So it's kind of resembling quite a lot what we did. Uh, we sometimes work uh, ourselves, as I said before. So this this is me and Matt placing the stones because we wanted it in a certain pattern uh, and the builder didn't really know what we were talking about. So we did it ourselves. Uh, and uh, we do a lot of hand sketches, a lot of quick drawings just to be able to, as I said before, to, to, to translate what we want to the builder, to the manufacturer. Sometimes it's more effective than to do it with a proper drawing. Still the same project, this being the lower part, which is the kitchen, which is a separate building. Uh, and the technical aspect of that. Um, here you can see the house sits quite firmly in the ground, as I said, uh, and you can you can walk up to the house, actually touching the stones and feeling the house close up, which is really nice. Um, We didn't do that much to this bunker. It was quite a small bunker. We just kind of cleaned it out and added a few uh, parts to it, uh, like a chimney and a wood wood burning. Um, what do you call it? Like a chimney. What do you call it? Stove. Stove thank you. Um, yeah. So the finished house here. I don't know how much time I have. The, the gravel is kind of like water falling down on the side. So it's a lot of walls uh, holding um, the gravel, but we also don't want to control too much. So it's actually kind of uh, coming into the courtyards, which is what we wanted. Uh, and the interior is a much more classic Swedish summer house, which is fur panel, like we've been building it since the 40s. Uh, so you can find some kind of resemblance for it. Yes, uh, a lot of pictures. OK, so the the third project is uh, called Atelier Djupvike, <laughs> uh, the last project in the triptych. Um, it's placed on the easternly part of Gotland, which is kind of the weather changes a lot. so. It, uh, it jumps from great weather to quite bad weather uh, in an hour, uh, but it's also kind of a lovely scenery to to hang around. Um, it's just by the water. This is what we came to when we first arrived to this site, like five years ago. Um, the owner of the property, uh, he had a lot of problem with these houses being uh, eaten by termites and the state of the buildings were really bad so it, the decision where to take them down but uh, it's kind of a sensitive area like everything else on Gotland but this being just 50 60 meters from the ocean we have some we have a protected line 
where you can't build anything new. Uh, but since we had old buildings, we could kind of, with a lot of work together with the municipality, but also with what we call land studios and which is controlling the uh, nature and the, the beach reserves, uh, we could, um, after a lot of discussions, agree that we could replace the builder buildings existing. So this being the existing ones and this being the new one. So the kind of talking uh, to each other, uh, both in, in, in the placement, but also in size in total. Uh, we kept the walls uh, surrounding the plot uh, to keep some kind of feeling to it since the houses were gone. Uh, and this being pictures from the building period, uh, this being the landscape planning uh, drawing again, which I love to talk about. Uh, this being also four buildings, uh, the main building. Uh, this um, this client is an uh, uh, artist, so he wanted the studio for his artworks. And then he has a garage and a guest room here, mini uh, shed here, and uh, I think it's called a earth uh, room or a sunken keller. So it's kind of a place where you store food. And they love to his wife loves to to grow stuff, so it's kind of a lot of planning going in there this is the final house photos from the beach um uh, some detailed drawings uh kind of resembling a lot of villa butter and the in detailing um but uh, less uh, complicated you could say and this is the old wall as we kept them and um and the house sits um, pretty much where they all once sat, so they kind of get the same uh, courtyard feeling. Uh, the house, the three main houses, uh, talking to each other from this photo. <clears throat> um, he wanted a stone bath in uh, because he's been to I don't know Italy or something, so we, we he wanted to have one. Uh, so this was a really important feature. So we made one and placed it on. The facade, this being interior uh, details. Uh, as I said, he was an he is an artist, and he wanted to invite his artist friends to to work together with us as architect to add extra to the house, uh, which was the first time for us to work. Uh, with uh, with some complete different elements, we never done that before. Um, in this case, he wanted to to be able to to color his house red in the evenings. Uh, this is one of many artworks that was already decided before the house was built. So we needed to have a place for this artwork. Uh, all the curtains, fabrics uh, are done by artists. Uh, these ones and also this sofa fabric and we decide we designed the sofa but they designed the fabric um in in this house uh there's a few artworks placed out in the in the courtyard or in the garden as well this being uh concrete uh artwork this is uh, a roof painting in this in the ceiling in the in the bedroom, and this being an artwork placed inside of the wall. Uh, the TV cabinet. He had a artist that he wanted to add some kind of termites pattern into the uh, to the hatch. You can you can hide the TV, and then yeah. So it's kind of it was tricky. And you needed the depth, uh, which yeah, I took quite a long time to, uh, to land this one, but it turned out to be nice. This being the surrounding, this is typical Gotland coastline. Back to the shower we looked at before. Um, yeah, and back to the things that we want to add these kind of unexpected or fun parts to it, uh, like this window in the door uh, or this kind of crazy palettes and color in the bathroom. This photo is just a few days old. Uh, with, this is my colleagues. Uh, 
we visited uh, last, what is this today? Yeah, like what, last Friday. Uh, I love the flowers just taking over the house now. Uh, okay, so that was the triptych. I don't know if I have more time, but this is uh, another project. Um, uh, the client gave us complete free to do whatever we wanted uh, as long as we try to keep the budget really low. Uh, Mats, my colleague, really inspires by technical installation houses we can find in every city, like a network for the local power stations. Um, so we went to our friends at the concrete factory to talk to them and see what we could find some interesting uh, materials, but also like structures, uh, um, textiles, how to do it. Um, we looked at a few other guys who done similar stuff. Inspiration, of course, we've done it once before ourselves. Uh, this is uh, a house on Bunganas we did a few years back, which also is prefabricated concrete uh, and kind of similar to yesterday's uh lecture regarding uh the coloring um we wanted it to be really really green uh also adding different stones into the concrete mix to to really get this effect um also when when the facade is wet it changes completely so uh, it's interesting, but this is a reference from me a few years back. This is what we ended, ended up being really interested in. This is the last part of the concrete when they just pour it out. It's uh, like really rough surface. And we decided that we wanted to try to work with this kind of surface for the house. Uh, and and then, yeah, in the factory, they were like really suspect, but still found this really interesting. So they wanted us to participate doing it. So we're actually working together with them all through the process. That this being Matt's doing a lot of work uh, with this. And we also placed the little ties into it. Uh, this being the final result of a wool. Uh, they were standing on, on the factory site until everybody, uh, everyone was done, and then we sent it up uh, to the site, um, put them together, uh, this being kind of uh, super rough, uh, kind of didn't know how to handle the roof, uh, um, the windows for this project, but uh, it ended up uh, being in metal, super basic. Uh, just letting the, the house talk of simplicity uh, and also of course the rough uh, roughness is also kind of talking with the budget which was quite low um, this being the final house um, yeah it's okay so this is the last really short one um, so the, the client who owns this house uh, also wanted a summer house, a pavilion. So this is what we're doing right now. It's actually going to be ready tomorrow at latest. Uh, um, he wanted a summer house, pavilion to his summer house. Um, so we decided to do it in scaffolding and plastic and trying to make it super basic. Uh, and we decided to build it ourselves. So we uh, we been up working quite a lot this is another project we did uh, inspiration let's just jump that one um, this is the drawing for this pavilion uh, scaffolding uh, adding a few wooden structures for it and then the the plastic and uh, these gray parts are aluminium sheets uh, it's gonna work as a shelter and a summer house and a summer room uh, daytime so you can hang out have a dinner if it starts to rain which it does a lot normally in sweden um this being renders from where we try to find the right uh shape form mm -hmm. this being the first pictures from site when we were building it cladded with plastic yeah this is just pictures from the working site where we are right now. Uh, hopefully we come a little bit further. That's why Mats not is here. So he needed to finish this before midsummer. That was the deadline. Uh, uh, 
interior uh, sliding doors and uh, water gutter. Uh, yeah, and that's it.